talking to somebody who was 24 years old this morning and we were just you know talking about life and uh, when I asked him how he was doing, the first thing he said was things could always be better. And I asked him to dig into that a little bit more and he was saying he was you know having a lot of anxiety and uh, feeling depression about uh, you know which direction he was going to take his life and being unsure about a lot of different things. And that's not unlike most people. I think they're all feeling, or, you know, I was feeling that way in my 20s. Um, I think a lot of people uh, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, a lot of people feel um, a, a deep amount of anxiety when it comes to uh, things in their lives. There's uh, so many choices. There's a paradox of choice in life. And we could do so many things. We see Instagram, we see these portrayals of perfection online, and we are kind of trained subconsciously by companies who are doing an incredible job marketing to us that we're deficient somehow unless we purchase things, unless we show a certain level of success. And um, and so it's a difficult thing to overcome. And what I told him to do was to think about the things he has and to be grateful for the things he has and focus on those things. Like he should be focusing every morning on I'm alive, I'm healthy, right? It's this mentality of the glass is half full as opposed to the glass is half empty. And I'm reading this book, uh, A Guide to the Good Life by uh, William Irvine. I'll uh, put a link to it in, in the comments. It's an awesome book about Um, stoic philosophy, uh, or essentially the philosophy of living a good life, how to live a good life. It's not something we necessarily get taught in our society. We kind of just tend to think that money is the answer, but there's a lot of steps that we can take to truly optimize our lives that have nothing to do with financial gain. And he says that what a a stoic philosopher will, will do is they would approach the glass is half empty, glass is half full scenario in a way where they would look at the glass and say, the glass is half full. They would ponder the glass and be like, wow, what what an amazing glass that I have. Um, What an amazing thing that this glass doesn't impart uh, a, a, a residue or taste on the water that I'm drinking, right? So he gives all these like colorful examples about being kind of joyful and, and diving many layers deeper than just um, the glass is half full or glass is half empty. Um, and another thing he, he talks about in the book, and I'll read this passage to you because it's really fascinating. The easiest way for us to gain happiness is to learn how to want the things we already have, you know, or want or appreciate the things we already have, I would say. And this advice is easy to state and is doubtless true, but the trick is to putting it into practice. And he says that um, uh, Roman uh, Stoics had the answer, or at least they thought they had the answer to this topic of how to put it into practice. Stoics recommended that we spend time imagining we have lost the things we value. For example, that our wife has left us, that our car was stolen, that we lost our job, things like that. Maybe that we lost our health, right? Tragic, terrible things. It's interesting how, um, if any of you listen to uh, Gary V. Uh, a lot of the things he talks about now are actually rooted in Stoic philosophy, even though he may not even know that they are. Um, he talks about uh, when people are having a you know a bad time. He says, like, well, imagine if your mom or dad died. How would that make you feel? How would that compare to the problem that you're facing today? And <laughs> people usually wake up pretty quickly and they're like, that would be terrible. And this would be a totally a BS thing that I you know, I shouldn't even care about in comparison. And so Stoics kind of, you know, thought of this idea of negative visualization. That's what they call it. And I think it was, uh, came from Seneca, uh, the Stoic philosopher Seneca. And I think in Western culture, the idea of visualizing something uh, or visualizing terrible things to happen to our loved ones is not something that we would at first glance think. Like that's a, that's a really terrible practice to do. But he says that pondering it just for a few moments here or there provides a sense of perspective in life. It provides us the ability to love the things we already have, which oftentimes we can take for granted in life. 
right? The fact that we are literally even alive, the fact that we have clean water, the fact that we have electricity, a lot of creature comforts that we just kind of toss under the rug and say like, whatever, that's just like normal stuff that I have. I want more. So um, it's an interesting practice. I think that whether you go to the extent of negative visualization and, and, and kind of thinking through tragic things that could possibly happen to help you with a sense of perspective to make you think that the glass is in fact half full or you just have a daily practice of feeling really grateful for what you have, um, regardless of, of, of you know, which approach you, you take, taking an approach um, is really valuable in kind of combating this, this feeling of things could always be better. So uh, hopefully this video helped you if you're if you're you know struggling through a particular situation right now um just try to focus on the the good things that you have and don't just focus on the layer of glass is half full go a couple layers deeper as stoic philosophers would do and be grateful for the fact that you even have a roof over your head or that you even have air conditioning on a hot day or the ability to access the internet or uh, modern comforts like clean water or a refrigerator, right? Like those are the baseline things that we should be super grateful for and we should ground ourselves with every day. Um, and I know that that's really helped me. So that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.